Hey Biggies and welcome to the final in our series of 10 best things for 10 years. Nice. That was pretty succinct, wasn't it, that yeah, time? Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Third time lucky. <laughs> uh, so this week, we're going to be talking about the 10 best beers we've ever had on camera yeah. on the channel. So not quite necessarily our favourite beers ever, mm -hmm. but ones that we've had on the channel that are the best. So you're starting with a beer that I don't think I've ever you've drunk. You've never had, no. ever, but I had it on, on the, the channel. channel. It's very exciting that I get to go like, hey, Brad, this is... Because this is it's certainly my favourite Belgian beer. Yeah. And it might even be my favourite beer in the world. Wow. Big, big shoes, big shoes. I, yeah, it is big shoes. So, And you're going to try this on camera and tell me whether you agree that it should be on this list. Yeah. So we're starting with the Jeopardy early on. So this is Arab beer from Didola. Didola literally means the mad brewers. And this is essentially a Belgian strong. So it's like a Duval, but it is hopped to within an inch of its life with nugget, an American hop. Uh, and it is fermented with a pretty wild and exciting yeast. You can like see you've how- gone, You've gone for a bigger pour than you normally do. How care, yeah, <laughs> for me. See how carefully I've had to pour and I've still yeah, got yeah. a massive amount of head. Lovely. It's 8%. 8%, bad boy. And it's a beautiful thing. That is a nice, it's a lovely colour, Johnny, to be fair to it. Nice, very, very beautiful. Tell me about that aroma, Brad. <sighs> wow. That's the best brioche caramelized, banana -y sort of thing. <sighs> it's be it smells beautiful. You've gone straight in for a taste. I mean, I'm not waiting around. I mean, like, yeah, so caramelized banana, banoffee, or like rum, rum sundae kind of thing. Mm. vanilla -y a little bit. Yeah. And loads of pear drop, and like you say, like brioche bread, honey. But then it's really dry, really bitter, but still those notes carry through. It it shouldn't work. It's great. it's absolutely crazy, but it's just incredible if you can pour it into your glass without ah. it. just. <laughs> <laughs> that is really nice. I think the the bitterness is unexpected somehow, but it kind of melts. Like as as you'll see as we film this, we're going to keep drinking this while we film. Yeah, the initial shock of the bitterness mm -hmm. will die down. Mm -hmm. Like initial, like your body has to get used to. It's it. kind of spiky. Yeah. 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 And it slowly dissipates, and your body just goes. This is this is my life now. It's caramelized banana, but it's bitter as fuck. So it's like you're sort of um, eating something really hot, sort of chili flavor, and you you know you, you go, oh, it's a bit too much. But then the more you eat, the more you get a high from like eating it, and you want yeah. to eat more of it. Well, it's kind of that, yeah, but without the, the sweat. I've got, I've got a sweat. Have on. you that's, got the sweat? That's just okay, the heat, yeah. I think in here, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's a beautiful beer. Having never drunk it before. I can see why it's in your top 10 for sure. And I've drunk everything else on the list, so yeah. that's fine. Yeah, that's a relief. Yeah. We can keep the list intact. Do you want to tell me about the next one, which is your favorite beer? I don't know about my favorite beer. It's my, f <laughs> this sounds bad, but it's my favorite street drinking beer. Right, it's your uh, go-to. Yeah, yeah, so like when I, when I ride around on my bicycle around South London, I will you go. You made that sound like you're sort of a kid in a Spielberg movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm basically like out of the Goonies or something. Right. So I'm on my, I, have, BMX. I, I wish I had a little BMX that could, you know. If you got like little ribbons on the handlebars. That'd be great, wouldn't yeah. it? Sadly not. Well, not, I don't know, not for a 40 year old man it wouldn't be. No, it'd be a bit, a bit <laughs> disturbing. But I do, I do like riding around uh, in the summertime when it's hot. And I think the most consistently crispy, tasty, beautiful, refreshing beer that I can get my hands on, uh, that I always, I know it's always going to be great, even if I'm not pouring it. You're dragging this out. Come on, tell them. It's Augustine Health. <laughs> it has to be. I drink it straight from the bottle and I think yep. it tastes great. I think that's how it, uh, unless it's from the oak cask yeah. at Augustine Keller, it's got to be out the bottle on the street. Yeah, and, and like, you know, where I go, sometimes I go to Hot Burns Black and uh, Toby, they always ask me, do you want a glass? And I always say, no, no, no thank you. No. no, thank you, sir. Who needs it? This I'm bottle's made of glass. I'm straight out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't want the aroma. No, I do. I do <laughs> want the aroma, but I think it's got such a powerful, uh, wonderful flavour that I just drink it straight. From it's there. an interesting beer because I find it a little bit. It's it's not skunky. It's not light strike, but it it's sulfury. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A little yeah, bit yeah. funky. In There's a nice something way. a little bit wrong. Yeah. flavour wise, that's that's boorish. It's, it's so right. Yeah. yeah so wrong yeah. that it's right. Yeah. Talking something that that um, is a little bit wrong. It's right. English hops. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're like, there's some really funky, weird things going on with English hops. When you use them wrong, 
Yeah. They, they can they can get really earthy, and, and that's why British breweries are the best at making British beer, because we know how to use them. And one brewery that uses them incredibly well is Five Points. Yep. Um, so Five Points Best, is pretty, it's a pretty new beer. I think it came out not long before the pandemic, but it's been... Yeah. Certainly when I'm drinking in London, it's the beer I'm most excited to see on tap because I just love like the, the earthy, hedgerow, blackberry, uh, really spicy kind of hop aroma. Also the massive bitterness that they've given it with a huge yeah. whack of whole, whole cone fuggal. And then a lovely kind of dry, slightly burnt caramel kind of base. I just think it's a beautifully balanced beer that, you know, we, a lot of people consider British cask as being twiggy and safe and dull. It is none of those things mm. while having all of the character of those beers. You know, it's everything that is in a traditional car scale, but amped up. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It, it, it is incredible. And it does the trick of having imparting all of those things that we love about cask, but also more kind of like modern stuff going on into this fusion that is massively drinkable. Yeah. And like, I will session that beer. I think it's... It's kind of a perfect beer, right? It is a perfect beer, yeah. So, it's a like, great example of a if, if you, uh, you know, you've never tried a cask ale before, yeah. I'd say get a pint mm -hmm. of best on cask. Yeah. Um, if you can get to the Pembo, go to the Pembo, have an ace pizza. pizza. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful day. And you should try the Railway Porter because that came close to being on this list as well. Both of those beers are just incredible and yeah. what the reason i think it's so good is the sourcing they do to with the hops as well you know getting it from hukin's hop farm mm -hmm. it's beautiful fuggle that they get from there and i think a lot of car scale brewers could learn a lot from from doing that you know there are breweries that do you know lebury harvey's they really source very carefully but that's how you make a great british beer because it's all about getting the best out of those hops and not letting the other side of it come through and that needs good sourcing Amen. and good use Best by name, best by nature. There you go. There's, there's a tagline, five points. Yeah. We'll send a check. Uh, very different beer now. Yeah. Couldn't get much more different, but still yeah. very hop-derived, to be fair. Very hop-derived. Heady. Heady top... Well, heady, heady top or up. focal for you? Well, heady or focal. This is the Alchemist, by the way, in case you don't heady know. Heady topper or focal banger. That is, that is such a difficult one. Um, you prefer focal, don't you? I do. I've, I put heady on the list. I, I really love heady. Right. And I, I, if you're going to ask me why, I can't tell you why. Oh. But I think it might edge over focal. So, Heady, I think, is a slightly more balanced beer. It's got a bit more robust maltiness from yeah. being 8%. Uh, the bitterness is therefore a little bit more in check. And the hop aroma is a little bit less juicy. Mm. It's very Simcoe, it's dank. Mm -hmm. Focal, Citra Mosaic is like bone dry, really pale, mm. with a ton of juicy uh, citra mosaic. And I really enjoy that because what I really love is that juice with incredible bitterness because it basically is grapefruit juice. Yeah. In, in yeah, the way yeah. that I it mean, presents bitter yeah. and incredibly citrusy. And I really enjoy that. I mean, Heady is still uh, possibly number two <laughs> in terms of IPAs for me. It's, I mean, they're both incredible beers. Uh, John Kimmich is a man that uh, is, I think, a singular mind mm. in what he does. And, you know, uh, he's also, he, you know, he really loves marijuana as well, doesn't he, Johnny? So dank, he loves dank flavours. I think he has a deep understanding of hops. I thought you were going to say of weed. He probably uh, does of have Of weed as well, because yeah. it's basically the same, yeah. it's the same family, isn't it? He's got a preternatural ability. Good word, eh? To, to bring it out the big guns now, Johnny. <laughs> Pre to that true ability to just fine tune the best qualities of the hops that he's using and like they just sing. They're like symphonies do you, in do you cans. Know what's, what's really interesting, when we did the Time Hop series with Siren and we so they were brewing homages yeah, to yeah, all the best yeah. ones, and one of them was focal. John Kimmich gave them all of the information they asked for, except for mm. the water chemistry. Right. So that's what he believes is, is the secret to yeah, his yeah. beer. The secret the sauce. Chemistry. Yeah. That's interesting, the water chemistry. So yeah, so it's something in the way that those hops present and then the texture that you get is, is down to the exact formulations of, of those different minerals that he's found. Wow. We can't talk about Heady without talking about the, the yin to the yang of mm -hmm. IPAs, mm -hmm. which is Pliny, which is still, particularly on a Sunday when it's half price, yeah. 
It's the best value beer that has ever existed yeah. and ever will exist. But it's, I mean, you take value out of the equation, it's still one of the best beers that's ever yeah. existed. Oh, of course. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd pay $20 for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And is. I've seen it in Toronado in San Francisco for like $20 or something. That's wild, because it's on tap yeah. the whole time. I know, it's mad. I don't know, I didn't understand either. But, it, I mean, it is a stunning, is the, the, the original double IPA. And still, I think the best, or still the one I'd reach for most yeah. on a on a personal level, because I just love. Again, it's that perfect balance between soft caramel malts and an absolute megaton of of you know. If we talk about the classic West Coast aroma, it's that soft caramel, and then it's citrus and it's pine forest mm. that is great about a West Coast, and why I don't love the ones that sort of remove any malt character. There's got to be some. Because it's all about the interplay of that bitterness and that sweetness. A West Coast air. It's a walk through a pine forest. Pine forest. Go on. While eating a, a creme brulee. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. So if I washed up on a desert island. Yeah. This is the beer that I would choose. And you've got a fridge on the desert island. No, I want. I want a tank. Oh, you've got a, ta a it's tank. It's got to be tank okay. fresh. A tanker has crashed. Yeah, maybe I was on it. On I was trying to steal all the pilsner at Cal. Yeah. And accidentally crashed the boat into a desert island. How many sea turtles did it take? Did you leash to bring the tank into oh, onto the island? Uh, just the one. one. He, he really liked Pilsner Urquell too. Holy shit! Yeah. He's a strong guy. Yeah. yeah. So so I have unlimited tank fresh Pilsner Urquell and only tank fresh. P check check Pilsners in small pack just aren't the same. You need it tank fresh. Yeah. Can I have a tapster with me? Don't know. Yeah, maybe you could bring Rad in. <laughs> well, actually, he would be. <laughs> he wouldn't. It. He wouldn't be pouring pills. He, he would be sure. serving it. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, no, I can pour it myself. I think I've learned yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how you've got, you've got a side pour. Uh, tap I've got a Luca well. tap as well. Nice, and nice. A tank, and tank fresh pills That brilliant. is that's my go-to. You All know, right. if I was to drink one beer for the rest of my life, that's what I'd want. Brilliant. Because this would get me in real trouble on that desert island. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to light fire. No, I wouldn't know no. how to crack a coconut. And also, I don't think it's, I don't know if that'd be that refreshing uh, day in, day Would, out. Wouldn't be great. Right? Wouldn't be great. Yeah, if you come out the sea having swallowed some seawater trying to <laughs> get some fish, that's probably the last thing you yeah. want to, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yes, Pilsner Raquel <laughs> is, uh, for my money, the best sub 5% lager in the world. Um, I have to agree. You should go to the cellars, like we said in our, in our bucket list video. It's just an incredible beer. Out of wood, special. Out of the wood. Um, it, you know, Tank hasn't seen the light of day or anything else in, in the world. Just in that Tank no doesn't, know, yeah. doesn't know what's happening and then it just gets consumed. Yeah, it's a short life. Shit. It's a very short life for Pilsner. Well, hopefully it's short. Short. you want to drink it real fresh as yeah. well. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. Nothing beats it. Mm. It is an acquired taste though and lots of people do prefer Budvar. This is fair enough. This we is fair we enough. are on the PU train when it comes to those specific beers, mm -hmm. but a beer that beats both of them, yeah. maybe not as a go-to, is the wet hopped reserve that we had in the Budvar cellar. It was very it. special. It was very, very special. It smelled like strawberries and licorice, like strawberry laces mm. and croissant. Croissant, yes. And drank like uncooked meringue. Wow. I'm making it sound good, right? I've got mm. to finish this on a high and was made all the more special for drinking it next to you. Oh, uh, buddy. I found it. Yeah, it was great. Um, I, you did, yeah, I mean, like, certainly that's a very recent upload, but I, that was a highlight of the 10 years. Of you you seem sceptical. No, it was a highlight of the 10. I'm saying don't be sceptical. It might have only been oh, in okay. recent memory, but I do genuinely think that was an amazing beer. Top 10 beers ever. Yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, if I could bring the two cellars together, PU and, and that, drinking out of the wood and then drinking that, I don't know which, which I'd prefer, to be honest, but... I think it's beers for different both occasions. Exceptional. We, we need both in this world. We do need both. I'm glad so, that there is a space for both of them. Yeah. I'm sad that it will never be released to the, uh, the public. No, I don't think it will. No. So we've made. We'll, we'll go back. And we've we'll. made a list where one of the beers people can't drink. I reckon if you went down, if you did the tour, particularly if you got Honza and just said, "What about Tank Three Nine Two? Is it Three Nine Two? I think it was Three Nine Two. Watch the video, guys. If yeah, you haven't watched. Find it. out the number of the tank. He might take you. He He'd definitely take, take you. It's yeah. got a little glint in his eye. Yeah. 
You know, he's up to some uh, some naughty things. Well, you could you like. could say to him as he said to you, it's like I want to drink something that I can die uh, die happy after. Yeah, and under the tank. Like, I know the tank. That's he. He will know what you mean yeah, he for will. sure. He will. Good guy, Honza. Talking of beer that will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> How about go on? Uh, my highlight from our trip to Omnipoyo, yeah, which was uh, Omnipoyo's Elma NMT. Wow! I don't know what the Elma bit's about, but Henock said the NMT stands for New Money Ticker. Yeah, yeah, it does. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, I which I guess is a little, a little jab, a little jab. Yeah, people with a lot of money buy, buying these rare beers. So it, it was a vanilla uh, Costa Rican coffee and coconut stout with a finishing gravity higher than most double IPA start at. Um, and it was pure decadence, and it was just one of the most delicious things I've ever tasted. Liquid decadence. Liquid decadence. Um, I mean, they're masters at what they do. Yeah. They really, really are. And it is technically very difficult to do, and technically very different. I mean, balanced is a strong word, mm -hmm. and in fact, structured would be a strong word for what that beer was. Mm. It was, it was just, it was like being punched in the mouth With by... Buy a coconut full of <laughs> vanilla and coffee. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. You know, it, it hurts. But Maybe walking along on your desert island, Johnny, getting hit on the head by a coconut yeah. full of that. Full of that, yeah. Christ. That, that's what it was. Dangerous. And I think, you know, I was previously, and you'll probably know, quite cynical of pastry stout. Like, always enjoyed the cultural aspect of it and the beautiful yeah. designs of Omni Pollo and huge respect for Henock uh, and, and Carl, but it was never something I drank very often. Mm hmm now I do buy quite a lot of Omnipoyo stouts when I'm feeling decadent. It yeah. really that beer and, and that trip, a hundred percent reintroduced pastry stout back into my life. Elevated uh, for for better or for worse, definitely for worse. <laughs> it's back in my life. Um, and yeah, I you know if if you've ever dismissed these kind of beers, there are people that do it right and make it very drinkable and very delicious. You just got to I don't know go for a run the next day or mm. brush your teeth or whatever it is. <laughs> So essentially, craft beer culture has become trying to find the best New England IPA. Yeah, has kind of has, hasn't it? And, and what I find interesting about it in this pursuit for endless new things that are essentially taste the same is actually we did we nailed it pretty early. I think and my, my still my favorite New England IPA is is Treehouse Julius. I mean, it's great, and I think being at Treehouse, drinking it with you, buddy. After a long day of driving and stuff. And a long queue. And a long queue, like hours the, long Yeah, queue. the queue did its best <sighs> to remove any goodwill. It's so good. But then when we sat down in those big chairs with our feet up. It's like being in a, at a theme park. Go on. And you are like super excited to go on the, the best ride. Yeah. And then you're like a queue, oh, an hour into the queue and you're, you're sort of waning Is a little bit. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? You're questioning your life decisions. Why have I driven here? Why am I in this part of the world and I've, I'm queuing like a mug? But you're not a mug because you're going to have, the, like you say, the best. You're going to go on an incredible yeah. roller coaster and have like a pint of orange juice. It's amazing. In your face. It's amazing. Which is what yeah, she has. Yeah, yeah. Julius really is. Funny story. When I went to Disney World, Florida, yeah. uh, we got up at like 6 a.m. to go to Space Mountain and miss all the queues. Got to the front of the queue. like We queued for like two minutes. Mm -hmm. And then my brother's like, I don't want to go on it. So my dad was livid, oh. and he was like, "Well, me and Johnny are going on it." And then because my brother chickened out and he was bigger than me, I was like, oh, "Maybe I'm too scared too." Oh no, you didn't go on Space Mountain. No, then then we went back the next day. Okay, and fair we, we, we went on it anyway. Uh, <laughs> Treehouse Julius um, is what I love. I, my favorite New England IPAs are the ones where they get a flavour in mind mm -hmm. and they try and shoot for it. Not just like, mm. let's do Citroen Rosé. Let, not, let's do a Simcoe one. It's like, let's try and make this taste like X or Y. Yeah. Which is what we did with our Cloudwater collab where yeah. we tried to make it taste like a margarita. What they, uh, Treehouse Julius. Julius is, is an orange juice brand mm -hmm. and they wanted it to be like orange peel, orange juice. And that's kind of what they nail in that aroma and that flavour and with a gentle hint of acidity and this big juicy body as well. I just think it's the most drinkable New England IPA, and that's the main criticism of the New England IPA. It's not that not that drinkable. Yeah. Right. And final beer on this list is probably the only one where we'd both be like, or oh, that and maybe Pills and Raquel, we're both like, yeah, obviously. First yeah. on the team sheet, as they say. Exactly. I mean, I've never had a pint of this that I didn't love. Yeah. Right? You didn't just smash and smile. Just the best. Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter where you drink it as well. We've had cans here that I've muled over. Yeah, it's great. We've had it in New England. We've had it all over the States. But Allagash White, the quality of it, kudos to the brewery, is incredible. The yeah. consistency of it is yeah. incredible. But just the original flavours, it's like lemon meringue with orange peel. It's just, it's just liquid gold. It's bonkers. It's bonkers. It's crazy refreshing. It's crazy drinkable. Um... I've sat in dive bars in New York drinking it. Um, I've sat in uh, places on the West Coast drinking it. It's nowhere near the West Coast. It always tastes great. Like you say, you've mule, mule cans over, travels well. It's kind of like a flawless beer, I think. Yeah. And it's nothing else that tastes like it. It's unique. Well, I mean, there, obviously there's lots of wits, but yeah. it has this kind of unique exactly like that. lemon meringue kind of thing yeah, that none of, the, none of the others seem to have. fantastic. Um, and Allagash, you know, they're one of those brews that are always looking to be more sustainable, stuff like that. You know, they're working on all these kinds of elements that are going to be hugely important in craft beer going forwards. Mm -hmm. And none of it's touched the flavour either. You know, all of the R&D they're having to do to use more local grains and stuff like that, it's still the same beer that it was. Um, and I think that's hugely impressive. And what I also love about it, same with, you know, Pilsner Raquel and some of the other ones we mentioned here, is, you know, beer's best vessel is the pint. Beer's mm -hmm. most important place is the pint. You know, there's always time for a small sampler, a festival, or a cheeky, naughty, big beer to celebrate something. But the pint is how we mostly consume beer. And I think Czech Pilsners, some extent West Coast IPAs, British bitters, and for some reason, Allagash White <laughs> are just the most beautiful things to drink from a pint over and over and over and over again. And that's where this whole argument about science and art, I think, comes from, because some beers are, from a technical point of view, perfect, but then transcend it. And that's, that's what Allagash White does. Exactly. It's somehow greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. And that's what all these beers are. They all, they all punch harder than they really should. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for watching this. I hope you haven't tried some of those beers and you can go out and try them. We'd love to hear what your favourite beers are, but in the same spirit as ours, we want them to be your favourite beers, including the context, because we drank all of these on the mm. channel in special locations. So let us know where you were when you had the best beer of your life. Uh, and we'd love to hear those stories. And we will, of course, read out lots of them on the podcast, which we do every week uh, on the Friday 5pm slash bubble podcast. Uh, just before we go... We are hosting a beer festival to celebrate the 10 years of the Craft Beer Channel. It's on September 16th at Hackney Brewery in North London. Tickets are available Dune here. Over half of them are gone already. So get your, uh, get your skates on. As, as I think my mum used to say that. I don't, I don't know where that came from. <laughs>